This is Eugene Hernandez from the Film Society of Lincoln Center. Today for the New York Foundation for the Arts, talking about developing audiences with Flavio Alves. <laughs> what did what, what, you find this thing? I want to stop pretending. I know. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Were you ever attracted to me? Ever. Does it matter? Does it? Does it matter? Why did you marry me? Did you know then, when you married me, that you're like this? So this idea of developing audiences, at what point do you start thinking about an audience? I started building my audience in a very, very early stage of making a film. Before I embrace a project, I want to make sure that I have an audience. So I keep asking myself, is there an audience for this film? Next target for me is to make sure that uh, I engage that audience, for example, building partnerships with different organizations. Since my film has always connected with social issues, I build a relationship with different partners, organizations and advocates, with the hope that once the film is out, they will embrace the film. But again, it has to start in a very early stage of making a, a film. So even at the writing stage, before the writing stage? Oh, before the writing stage is Tell when I have an idea. Okay. Is when I have an idea, I start struggling with that. You know? And uh, it's just like a, a, a marriage, you know, and I really have to fall in love with the subject that I, I'm, I'm embracing. It's always a work of collaboration mm -hmm. because I bring those partners. They share the, their stories with me and then it's back and forth. I want them to be as part of the process of making this story because again, I go back to them to get the support. So we all have to be on the same page that, well, with the type of story we're telling. But also, it's my responsibility as a filmmaker to engage with the time that I'm living in. So all those stories that I'm telling have to be authentic. You've made short films. Yes. You're making your first feature mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can give us an example that kind of elaborates what you were just talking about, that idea of thinking about the audience from the very beginning, from the very inception of the idea for the movie. Yeah, the film, Tom in America, with Bert Young and uh, Sally Kirkland, was a short film. And uh, we had two Academy nominees in the film. Both of them are over 70, you know, and, uh, which is my demo, the demographic I like to work with. Before I wrote the script, I went to the Tom of Finland Foundation LA. And I went there, I was like, listen, I would you like to uh, make a film about Tom of Finland? And they allowed me to make that film for free. And they were just concerned about uh, this type of story I was telling, you know, which after they read the script, they were pretty comfortable with that. This is a good example of a perfect partnership mm -hmm. with different organizations and how we can bridge, not the gap, but actually can come together for a good cause and make a great film. Let's talk more about this idea of finding and nurturing and cultivating an older audience, a mm -hmm. senior audience. I travel a lot with the film. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the Tom in America was in more than 150 film festivals. Mm -hmm. But beside the film festivals, I also go to public libraries senior centers, the places where I can find my audience. They are not, for the most part, on VOD or Netflix. So I have to find other ways to uh, engage them because they usually go to film festivals, the local film festivals, which I love, traveling to small, film, small town film festivals, like Fargo, Asheville, it's incredible, mm -hmm. you know? And then you meet all kinds of people that uh, they invite you to come to, you know, to schools and uh, public libraries and uh, uh, senior centers, and I'm open to that. Actually, when I go, uh, I actually am very open. I talk about it. You know, if you want to invite me to go to your club, uh, I am here and I'm glad to do it. And um, I love engaging audience in different levels and, and, and uh, meeting people face to face. Politicians used to say, shaking hands and kissing babies. It's the same thing with film. I love engaging audience face to face. I love that after screening, people come to talk to me. It's, uh, it's, um, it's amazing. That's what I make a film. You know? For you, it sounds like going to that regional festival, yeah. visiting a new place, is actually just an introduction or an opportunity to dig deeper into a community. Mm -hmm. It's the start of a relationship with a community that you're trying yeah. to take a little well, further. If you ask me what's, you know, what's my best experience between going to Sundance and going to Asheville or Fargo, mm. there is no question about it. And the answer is Fargo. I love Fargo. It was my best experience ever. It's a small town, but you meet real people. I, don't, I can't describe the experiences that I have when I go to a small town like Asheville or Anchorage. <laughs> you see moose, you see uh, bears in the street, it's incredible. I mean, that's, that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. I feel that I'm having fun every day. 
my newest film, it's about uh, a Mexican trans woman uh, living in New York City. So I went to the Mexican embassy and uh, trying to get the support. I went to the Brazilian embassy because I'm a Brazilian. I went to different uh, trans organizations and also LGBTQ organizations that has the potential to build a partnership with me and help me to tell a better story. It's the process of falling in love with the stories is the first step. Then going to them, to those partners, building those partnerships and getting their full support while I'm writing the story. I became a filmmaker because I'm attracted to the dream that I could make a difference in those people's life. So it's my responsibility to draw a fair picture of that community. I see my role as a filmmaker as, uh, as a storyteller, as someone that has that potential to bring those lives, those, those stories to the big screen and that help to have a positive impact, to have to s spark a debate mm -hmm. on those uh, pressing social issues, you know, and that, that's my role. I make films because I can make, uh, make a difference in people's lives. I would love to talk for a bit about the fundraising process because I know that that, for you and your work, the audience development is actually happening at the fundraising stage. I have done several Kickstarter campaigns in the Gogo. I came to a point that uh, it's so saturated with many people doing the same thing. And uh, if I ask you, send you another email, ask you for $5 to donate to my campaign, you're going to delete my email. But I, I thought like, uh, okay, what can I do? What's out there that have not been explored before? So we had this idea that actually came by accident of fundraising money on eBay. Because I, from my previous project, I had a lot of old equipment that I had to sell. And I put on eBay, and then I sold very quickly. I was like, okay, that's a really, it's gonna help me for my next film. And I was like, a, bingo, I found a good way to fundraising. So I presented that to my producers. Everyone thought I was crazy. This, you are completely out of mind. This is not gonna work. Using who, eBay to fund the movie. Yeah, and then who's gonna buy your stuff, like old CD player, not, uh, 12 years old, no one used those things. Who's gonna buy that 50 years old camera? Our initial goal was $10,000, which we reached in about two weeks. Then I was like, okay guys, our next goal is $25,000. It was a new discovery, you know, and we were all excited. And I started bringing more PAs to work with us, you know, and I have about 10 PAs. We had one person specialized in taking photos. And then one person specialized in packing, another person, a bunch of two, three or four specialized in uh, writing the description for each item and put online. We kept in having more people working for us and uh, people started donating stuff. Could be anything. I sold anything from uh, adult toys to cat food to old jackets. I also created these websites, ebaymyfilm.com. Welcome everybody for the third episode of the goodie box i'm your goodie box guy anthony abdo actor in the upcoming feature film the garden left behind our ebay campaign is still rolling and i'm here to give you the updates on what we've been getting for this week we have here a throwing hatchet this is a, a real favorite item of mine cat food duh cat food and then we reached the 25, then $50,000, then our last goal was $100,000. Now it's $103,000 that we raised on eBay. One thing is the, the fundraising aspect of uh, raising $103,000, which is pretty good. But the other part, part of it is that the engaging audience aspect. Because I realized that uh, because we had more than 3,000 items posted on, on eBay, each item had uh, an average of 200 people clicking on it every single day. Those are completely strangers f from everywhere, everywhere in the country. And uh, they are clicking on that item and they see our page about the film. Mm -hmm. So they learn about the film. That's the beauty. You are discovering new way of reaching out uh, a potential audience. People that you would never learn about the film otherwise. Mm -hmm. People have got perks for donating stuff for us. It's a good way of funding the film, but also a good way to connect with potential audience. Let's switch gears and talk about social media, and let's talk about the tools that you have at your disposal to connect yourself with an audience before a festival, for example, and even after building your career over the course of multiple films as a filmmaker. Which tools are you using? How are you using those tools? 
social media, especially Facebook, and um, I'm an old school, so you use Facebook instead of Instagram. But if your film has a relevant message, if your film has the, this unique power to inspire, educate, mobilize, marginalize, and overlook communities, mm -hmm. then you have a really great film that can actually become really big on social media. Social media takes a huge amount of time. As one thing is to have an audience, the other thing is engage your audience. If you don't do your homework and engage your audience, no one's gonna care about your film. So that's one thing. Other thing that I do is to have a website. My website also have a sign up page. Usually I ask like uh, basic information, name, email, but most importantly, the city. The city is so crucial because let's say I go to San Francisco, with, uh, I have a screen in San Francisco. So I have to make sure that uh, the people who sign up on that page who lives in San Francisco mm -hmm. will know that there is a screening. And uh, actually, I actually like the idea that I have coffee with them after the screening. I, I love it. Maybe because I worked for many years in politics and that in order to keep my job, I had to learn how to fundraise and uh, engage audience. It's not different. You know, engage audience looking for potential voters but, uh, in the same way that they look for audience to go to the theater, pay $15 to watch a film. It's not different, you know. And, uh, so because I have that experience before I came to the film business, it helped me tremendously on how to fundraise and uh, how to survive in this business. I imagine you couldn't have predicted when you were working in politics and dreaming of making movies that there would be such a strong connection. The way you're talking about building an audience for film, I can see the parallels. It's like both a, c a community and a campaign. You're doing both through these tools and through right. your approaches to try to cultivate that audience for your film. It's incredible how close they are. It's incredible. At the end of the day, if you're you know, in politics, um, you have to inspire people to, so that they feel compelled to leave their homes to vote for you. The same thing with film. You have to inspire people to go out and uh, watch your film. And uh, it, it's difficult. It doesn't stop me from trying things, trying new things, because you can't uh, keep doing the same thing and expect different results. That was Obama's line, you know? I stole yeah. it, you know? Makes sense, you know? You have to always to create different tools that might help you to reach a potential donor or, or audience. As we speak, the whole strategy of filmmaking is changing. Maybe three years from now, that strategy that work, is working now might not work in two years from now then I'm done. So I always have to be a, a ahead of the curve mm -hmm. to understand what's new, what's out there, how I can explore those new tools in my advantage for fundraising or for reaching out potential audience. Mm -hmm.